Hello, everyone, and welcome to our webinar today. My name is Jordan Aberziz, and I am the Senior Content Marketing Manager here at Critical Start. Wanted to start off with a quick housekeeping note. If you have any questions during the presentation, please feel free to submit them through the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. We will allow time for answering those questions at the end of the presentation. And now I'd like to introduce you to your speaker today, Chris Carlson, the Senior Vice President of Product here at Critical Start. All right, Chris, take it away. Great, thanks, Jordan. Uh, thanks for the introduction and glad to be here to walk through for this session, uh, the overview and results on the most recent micro ingenuity attack evaluations for managed services. We wanna take a different approach for this webinar to have an educational approach for um, uh, customers that are looking to evaluate managed services. So for this session, I'll go through the emulated attack retrospective which is what MITRE did during the eval, and best practices uh, for adopting managed services. So as Jordan said, I'm the Senior Vice President of Product here at Critical Start. So first, a little brief commercial on Critical Start. So Critical Start is a leading provider of managed detection and response services, and we cover almost all of your security infrastructure in your environment. So MDR services for endpoint security, SIM, XDR, cloud, identity threat detection using the tools that you already have. And that really is a key difference about how can you get more value, more security outcomes from the tools that you already have or those tools that you may be using in the future. And uh, our company is uh, the, the only provider with the industry's only contractual SLA for time to respond. So with that, let's get started. So for the agenda today, we'll go over the MITRE attack evaluation, what it is and why did MITRE do this. We'll talk really briefly about the testing environment, because as you know, most testing environments to evaluate the effectiveness or even qualitative capabilities uh, of a participant doesn't mirror real world production. We'll go through the emulated adversary. And then what type of attack campaign did MITRE emulate for this evaluation? We'll go over the overall attack sequence and we'll carve out a time for specific technique breakdown. So as you can imagine, this is a, a quite involved and detailed evaluation. I'll, I'll uh, just use a few of the techniques and break down on uh, some key adversary steps. We'll go through the overall results and the list of MITRE TTPs used in the eval, and then have a couple slides on best practices when selecting managed security services. Um, so we wrote an ebook uh, that's available on our website. Uh, you can actually just go there and download it. We do not have a gated form. So we wanted to have this be an educational piece for the community and understanding how and what happened during the uh, MITRE eval and how you can use this to do some qualitative analysis of <clears throat> uh, providers that you may be selecting. Um, and most of the content from this presentation is from that ebook. We went into uh, more detail in that ebook. It's you can see from the table of contents is quite a lot. We're not going to cover everything in that ebook. I'll call out some specific items from this. And then if you have any follow-ons, feel free to go to our website, criticalstart.com and download the ebook and look at the other technical information we have. So why did MITRE create this evaluation? If you know about the MITRE attack evals, it's always historically been on security tools themselves. The enterprise eval is on endpoint detection. And then two years ago, MITRE created an industrial control system security eval. Both of those are on the technical tools. This is the first time that MITRE has created an evaluation on managed security service providers around detection and response. And a lot of it came out with from a survey that they did themselves in uh, 2021. So they conducted a survey and the results were actually very significant or surprising. So 58% of organizations rely on managed security services to either complement their in-house or as their main line of defense. And then if you're under 5,000 employees, the number jumps to 68%. So that's a lot of organizations relying on third parties to deliver many services. What came out of that survey was roughly half of those organizations were not confident in the services people or technology. Now, if you leverage in-house SOCs, the confidence actually spikes to 75% of your own in-house. 
But now with alert fatigue and, and trying to hire and retain SOC analysts, that becomes more difficult. So that actually was uh, interesting for MITRE. And that's why they wanted to take a different approach to an evaluation to do some qualitative um, analysis uh, and review of how a managed services provider would respond uh, in an emulated adversary attack. The difference is this evaluation was the first time that they used the closed book of the adversary attack. In the enterprise evals, they tell all the providers, this is what we're doing. Here's the actor. This is the campaigns. You know, Go and prepare for it. Study for the test. And maybe that's why, in some cases, the results of endpoint security tools have been increasing over the past couple of evals. But this one was a closed book. No one knew. We didn't know what was happening during this. And that was really one, one of the tests. And I'll show you how Critical Start performed uh, in concert with the overall attack sequence. The testing environment, you can see here, this is it. There's six hosts. There's four victim hosts on the left-hand side, and there's two attacker hosts on the right-hand side, not connected to the internet, local Active Directory server, not connected to the cloud. So this really was something from their enterprise eval testing endpoint. A lot of it favored raw event telemetry data collection, right, which is not normal in uh, real-world environments. In fact, if you had to take six hosts and extrapolate it to 3,000 or 5,000 or 10,000, you need a much different approach uh, to actually detect adversary activity. Also, uh, in this environment, we could not instrument identity. It was difficult to instrument emails. Uh, you couldn't do cloud applications because there wasn't cloud applications. So for this, the scope was really the enterprise eval, which they just tried to reuse for the managed services. And, you know, it's tough. It's tough to have a testing environment, try to simulate real-world protection, uh, in that aspect, but also they had everything turned off. So all prevention turned off, all response turned off, all default configs that hardens and deflects attacks from the beginning were all turned off. And I'll show you some of those examples as, as we go through the steps. Critical Start ourselves, our MDR services, uses a platform and a 24 by 7 SOC analyst. Our platform can take your alerts and your telemetry from your security tools. Uh, bring it into our platform. And from there, we conduct our um, case investigation and investigations. Uh, the key thing really means is it's independent and agnostic of any vendor tool you have. Doesn't matter what endpoint detection response tool you have. Doesn't matter what SIM you're using. Doesn't matter if you have one EDR tool today and you're changing it tomorrow. Uh, we bring it and we normalize it and we abstract it all within our platform to make it very easy to support multi-vendor environments uh, products that you may change from one to the other uh, in a consistent interface and a consistent touch point with our analyst and your team. All right, what was the adversary? So the adversary uh, we discovered as part of our eval, we discovered that uh, they used, and, and this was correct, that a, uh, an oil rig hafnium attack campaign. This is a suspected Iranian threat group that targeted Middle Eastern and international victims since uh, 2014. Even though they're an Iranian group, and even though they're called oil rig, this was not an industrial attack. This was actually a data exfiltration attack. They used a spear phish email to get started, download infected document. That's how it always begins, right? And then they uh, perform reconnaissance and discovery inside that network. They move laterally two or three times to get to a SQL, a SQL server, and they didn't break in the SQL server database. They actually found the database backup file on the SQL server machine, and they exfiltrated that via email communications. Um, I think if you set up testing environments, it's probably some of the same things. MITRE wanted to have some fun. Uh, our Threat Hunter team found this, and that's the fun fact, which we put on the right-hand side, that as an Iranian a suspected uh, 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 attack that they uh, used, we found two of the usernames, Tus and Gasta Ham, are mythological Iranian princes, which is interesting. And the host, they referenced female pop artists. Jenny from The Block is one host and Dunko Chasing Waterfalls as the other one. So some fun in there and our threat team and our security analysts on the Critical Start side had fun with that, but we did find at Critical Start the threat group that was used and we submitted that as part of the results prior to the disclosure of what that was. All right, 
So this is the sequence of attack that we'll go through. There was 10 steps from initial compromise down to workstation discovery, web shell, credential dumping, uh, exfiltration, and cleanup. I'm only going to talk about, for the nature of time, the ones highlighted in these red red boxes. For uh, details of each of these steps, you can download our Critical Start uh, MITRE ATT&CK ebook from our website. Uh, be happy for you to get that and go through this in more detail. So I'll just cover some of these um, on how and why we make a difference in our detection and response services and how we use our platform and our analysts to really have a lot of value to our customers across uh, different maturity levels of their environment. So step one, this is a standard uh, page that we have. Step one describes the compromise. Uh, this case is started with a um, phishing email for initial access. It's interesting in this testing environment, they did not have a real email server. Uh, they backloaded the email into the user's email box. And then the user received a targeted email, uh, a phish. Um, in that was an attached document that was infected, ggmsoverview.doc. The user downloaded, had some um, uh, embedded macros to execute code, then downloaded second stage and off you went. And that's a normal attack path for that. What's interesting down below is how MITRE had to change uh, default configurations, in this case, Windows 10, where they turned off, they disabled client-side phishing detection from the MS Edge browser, right? Um, hopefully in your environment, you have production protection capabilities in place, you have patch your vulnerabilities to deflect those attacks. But in the case that your prevention tools miss it, that's where detection response is very valuable and critical start with our platform approach and 24 by seven SOC adds a lot of value. On the right hand side is our interface. That's a screenshot of our interface. We can bring in any vendor tool, we can bring it together, but we don't just forward you alerts from the vendor's tool. You can look at those alerts yourselves in those product consoles. We bring them in, we normalize it, and then we give you easily to read information that spans multiple alerts into a single case that you can look at. And you can see the additional behaviors observed, um, that zip archive that was downloaded, the, the GGMS infected uh, document. Uh, they also executed the documents and LDAP queries uh, for some discovery. So you may have in your security tools, one, two, three, five, 10, 40 alerts, we bring those together into a single higher order alert structure and share that with you in our web and mobile interfaces so you can see it very easily. And that is very uh, powerful when we normalize this across multiple security tools that, that you have. So after step one, the adversary then did step two, workstation discovery. And this is normal and expected. And this is what they did three times across three different hosts, get access, do a discovery, figure out where they are, uh, both local user group and system, then do some, recon, uh, some, some recon, get to the second host, and then do the same thing, and then move to the third host. How they laterally move between all the three hosts were different because they're trying to exercise different approaches. One was a web shell, one was RDP nesting, but once they landed, they did sort of the same things. Land, um, remove their, uh, their malware, living off the land, native Windows capabilities, do a discovery, download second stage possibly, and then go from there. And you can see in the workstation discovery, uh, this piece of malware, system failure reporter.exe, so not a real Windows things, spawned CMD and did all these discovery commands. Who am I, host name, IP config, net user, net group, and even more, right? That for us was a, a true indication of an adversary taking effect after the initial infection. If you have antivirus technology enabled in prevention mode, that would that would have blocked the download if it was seen before on the first stage. If it wasn't seen before, we saw it in step one. We saw it again in step two. And that's where we then represent the what's the risk and what's the action that you can do. And that's where it comes into our managed detection and response services. So our platform has the ability to integrate with all your security tools and we normalize it within our web interfaces and our mobile applications. We have a native mobile application uh, called uh, Mobile SOC. And then you yourself can view all the details. You yourself or us, depending on the escalation, can actually do the uh, response directly for the web interface or the mobile. At this point in time, 
then attack would have been stopped from it. But uh, most MDR providers would say we would have stopped the attack also. But I think that the analysis that we did outside of the vendor alert itself and the ability to use our web interface or our mobile SOC application to see it very easily and normalize across all your security tools. It doesn't matter if you have 35 different endpoints uh, vendors there and different SIMs and different identity, we will normalize it and you can actually see it right in one interface. We'll skip step three. We'll get to step four on a web shell. The reason why I did this is because this is how they first did their lateral movement to get from infected uh, system one over to infected system two. So system failure reporter.exe downloaded the contact.aspx and then copied it over to uh, waterfalls, that second host and then instantiated it within the Exchange server. And that's how they're able to uh, get access to that system. If you look at the bottom one, Critical Start Vendor Independent Triage and Investigations, that really shows the power of our platform. Because when you get an alert, the alert may be just an indication of some behavior. Oh, you know, this file was loaded or something else. Our platform not only can do responses, across the vendor's tools, we can actually do enrichment and triage and investigation into those tools or in your infrastructure. So here's a screenshot at the bottom where the analysts through our interface can just get in, uh, some details on IOC, get all the logged in users that were on that machine, look at machine information itself across IP address or uh, MAC address or uh, uh, operating system or different views. And that really helps us and our analysts accelerate investigation across different systems. They don't need to know what is the CrowdStrike CLI command to get a list of users. What's the Microsoft Defender um, uh, you know, web interface to get this information? What's the Sentinel one? It doesn't matter. We normalize it, which is how we can give those 60 minute contractual SLAs to all our services, regardless of what product tools that you have. Once again, on the right-hand side, it's not just alerts that we forward back to you. You can look at those alerts in your tool. You can see on the right-hand side very, very cleanly what was observed. A remote session created this file on this host. These are the associated users. These are the associated alerts that have happened prior to that. The attacker may be trying to do this behavior. What's the risk? And then what's the action? So you can see it very cleanly defined. This is not an after action report. This is not a long PDF that gets sent to you after you've been breached. This is what our alerts look like at Critical Start in our platform that both our analyst and your team looks at. So you're all operating off of a single set of behavior. As we move forward on web shell installation continued, once they uh, uh, instantiated the web shell and moved, they actually dumped credentials. Right. So you can actually see that uh, from here um, and other things which they have, have performed also. So all alerts, we bring up uh, a history of time and then give other recommendations, even outside of our platform. So while you can do endpoint commands and identity commands um, on, on the response, you can see here in this big screenshot at the bottom what is recommended. The behavior appears to be a continuum. So even though uh, that we may escalate an alert to you, another analyst in our team is looking at the history and adding on to that as a single timeline view of investigations. This device is an exchange server. So, hey, this is really important. We recommend you should do the following. Lock out the account, boombox, gasta. Remove and blacklist this web shell file. Isolate the remote host. If possible, isolate the server. And then we identified the outbound C2. We said, in addition, put in a firewall rule to block uh, that outbound C2. So we're not just endpoint only, like some other endpoint vendors, and you can only isolate the host. We give you a wide view of what's happening in the environment, what type of response actions that you can take, both within our platform or other security tools that uh, we don't touch within our platform. All right, so step six was that credential dumping. So now they got onto that second machine, they downloaded, uh, once again, a, another second stage. They dumped credentials from LSAS. They uh, put it into a 0.1 TXT file, which is not a text file. It was actually a SQLite uh, binary file, which they called .txt, and they exfiltrated it over HTTP POST command um, for um, a C2 channel, right? And then they deleted their second stage malware, and they deleted the list 
of uh, creds. So that becomes important. We saw that activity. You can see what was absolved on uh, what we saw on the right hand side. But once again, we went beyond just an alert. We actually used our triage mechanisms and dumped all credentials, usernames from that host itself and said, this is the list of host names that were, excuse me, this is a list of usernames, user accounts that were on that box. So that means it's not just, oh, uh, my creds got dumped and now I need to force password changes entire my entire environment. We give you that blast radius to understand where you may need to start initial response before you want to extend beyond that. So you can see all the user credentials from the Exchange server should be considered compromised. We dumped it from the server and you can see some uh, a list of there, not only Gasta and Tus, which were the commands, but also domain admin commands and a few other commands that actually were good user behavior, but still on the system. So once again, more context that we give you from an escalation point of view beyond just what may have been sent from uh, your system tools alerts. Um, last step, which is probably the most important one, step nine before 10, which is the, the collection and the exfiltration. Once again, they created another piece of malware called VMware.exe. That's not VMware.exe. Um, it's just the name of it, and that's a defense evasion technique. They found the backup file, the SQL Server database. They split it into 20,000 byte chunks, and then they used uh, the Exchange Web Services API to exfiltrate it over uh, email. And you can see all the results that we found, uh, what site they sent it, what username they, they, they used to send it, and they, they broke it up. So that really is the, uh, the holy grail on the crown jewels, which they, uh, they got. They didn't break into the database. They didn't do brute force passwords. They didn't um, exploit a vulnerability on that SQL server. It was probably a lot. They didn't exploit that. They just found the backup file that was actually stored on the same machine as SQL Server. So once again, some adversaries are as lazy as some people. The shortest path to their target is often what they take. And once again, we saw all that behavior. We put it into our unified format and then we sent it off to MITRE acting as the customer to see that. So overall results. So critical start using the vendor tools that were configured in the environment detected adversary activity across all steps of the MITRE attack email. Uh, this listing on the right-hand side is all of the tactics, uh, all the TTPs uh, across all those steps. Um, while MITRE only reported a subset of that or wanted vendors to report against a subset, there's actually a lot, a lot of extra digital exhaust that came out of these these actions. I showed you that screenshot where the first malware was doing LDAP discovery commands. Well, that's not on here even though it happened because they wanted to test for certain things. So we really found the superset of all things that happened during the attack. And we have a capability within our platform called Threat Navigator that plots everything visually so you can see the timeline from left to right of all of the attacks. So as we uh, take a few uh, minutes here and go through best practices, um, that's really interesting, right? So MITRE evaluation wanted to present a qualitative assessment, which is really a, a change from their quantitative. They say there's no winners, right? Uh, they, they try not to put all these things in a stack rank. And it's really about presenting the qualitative assess assessment method. And that's why we created that ebook that shows how we engage with our customers and why we can have a 60-minute contractual SLA that no one else has because our platform approach uh, across agnostic security tools and our SOC analysts to have a single view of how we manage alerts and cases and send them to you is very powerful. So for best practices, so number one, select a provider that has vendor agnostic unified platform. You might start with MDR services from your endpoint vendor, but when you want to add a SIM or you want to add identity or you want to add cloud or you want to add something else, what we've seen a lot in our customers, they move away from the MDR provider offered by the EDR tool into us or into someone that actually can support more than just the endpoint. Uh, number two, evaluate providers that deliver additional context, risk analysis, guided recommendations, multi-vendor response actions, not just forward the alert to you. Uh, frankly, there's no value to forward the alert. You can look at the alert console yourself. Um, you can put into your SIM, you can put into JIRA. How do you get the additional context? And I think the screenshots that I showed you that shows all of the, uh, the additional analysis that our SOC has done, looking at previous alerts, putting into that context, giving you recommendations is very powerful. 
Uh, number three, design a multi-pronged security approach beyond the endpoint. In fact, that actually goes back for the first statement. The endpoint is a great way, a great first place to start. But increasingly, adversaries are attacking your identity systems. So how can you prevent uh, and detect in your identity systems that may not be running endpoint software like Okta or um, uh, uh, or other uh, multi-factor secure sign, sign on cloud uh, providers. You can't put an endpoint in their cloud. So how can you do that beyond the endpoint? Number four, determine if the provider presents alerts in a situational awareness approach. There's a lot of alerts. Just this one adversary activity on six hosts in one week generated over 300 alerts. You just can't make sense of it. How do you put together on what you need to do and take action right now? And then lastly, it doesn't matter in some case how quickly or how uh, uh, rapidly your provider sends you an alert or an escalation. If your own team doesn't respond in a timely manner, that's where the adversary then starts to still operate. So select a provider that tracks and reports on improvements for your own team performance. So all of those things we offer within our platform, uh, here's some screenshots of our actionable dashboards. The first one, situational uh, awareness and guided response. I am the analyst, Rob Davis. That's actually the name of our CEO, but you know he's not logging into your system. Uh, critical systems with alert. So all nine of your critical assets can be listed here with alerts. You can click on that and you can drill down what alerts have been escalated, when things are uh, pending remediations, and very quickly, can you go through a workflow to get the critical alerts on critical systems and do a respond workflow to um, take care of the adversary activity. I say, if you only have five minutes, what is the most important thing you can do right now to reduce uh, the risk uh, of breach or compromise from active adversary activity in your environment? Uh, we support multi-vendors within the platform. We're not an EDR provider. We're an MDR provider across multiple uh, systems. You can see here in this screenshot, this uh, customer has Splunk 365 def a Defender for Microsoft, Microsoft Defender for Endpoint. So once again, we bring multiple things in, whether the rules are created by our uh, th uh, threat detection engineering team or from the vendor. Our TBR is our trusted behavior capability to actually identify false positives at scale and ultimately detect what is a true positive or unknown that requires investigations. We map all closed alerts across a MITRE attack so you can actually see where they fit in the attack chain. Yeah, you wanna have more things stopped on the left-hand side, but in this case it's good that you stop lateral movements and command and control before there's a collection or an, an exfiltration. We show you all the historical activity that's part of our SOC transparency across all products and all timeline. You can see all the things that have happened, the events that have come in, the false positives that have been closed out by us, the work hours saved by both our platform approach and our analyst and any alerts so we investigate and ultimately we send to you. So this is the big event reduction capability 24 by seven as part of our service. And then the last thing, which is all the metrics that we have our own SOC analysts are able to perform and track to meet our 60 minute SLA for you, you now can track within our platform on your own analyst. So for example, the rolling MTDR of your analyst when we assign something uh, to you. On the right-hand side, the combined TTR metrics, time to resolve metrics on a single alert basis. How much of that time, 30 minutes, 60 minutes, two hours, 40 days, did we do versus your team? At the bottom left, the MTDR on a per user basis in your company. In this case, Michael and Marcy, just as 29 days and 24 day MTDR, they're probably overloaded. You know, they're not getting assigned the right alerts. That is where the adversary is operating in this dwell time, not only just the work that we've done, but if it's sitting on your side for, for the ultimate uh, 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 action, that's where the adversary operates. And then the assign alerts by users gives you that alert workload to actually see if maybe the reason why some of your analysts are taking time to close out the alert and investigate is because they're overloaded by the type of alerts. So then if you're a customer of Critical Start, you can contact our uh, customer success team and they can actually change the notification groups to have different people within your, your team get assigned different alerts for that. So um, uh, 30 minutes goes quick. Uh, the ebook is a lot of pages. 
Um, I wasn't going to drain the entire thing. We have a lot of information on our website, so you can download. These are all links, but we'll follow up uh, for those that you, that of you that attended and those that um, uh, that have uh, registered but were not able to attend. We'll follow up with all these links. The de- the ebook you can download from our website. You can overview of our managed detection and response services. Our ZTAP platform is revolutionary in terms of how we can do this. We have a cyber incident response team. So for example, if there is a case of a breach or compromise in your environment, we have an incident response team that can respond. A lot of our detections are based on our cyber threat intelligence and our hunting team. We have a lot of technical blogs. And uh, even in this market, Critical Start is hiring. So uh, if you are technical, uh, if you have a customer success background, if you have a sales background, if you have a SOC background, we're always hiring also. So you can click on, on that careers page. Uh, so with that, I'm I'm finished. We probably have uh, time for one or two more questions if they've come in. Great. Thank you, Chris. Uh, what an awesome presentation. Um, like you said, 30 minutes does go quickly, but we do have time for just a couple questions. Um, some have already come in. So please feel free to keep submitting questions. And if we run out of time, then someone will follow up with you directly to answer. Um, so, okay, first question. You haven't said what security products you used in the eval. Are you able to share that info? Yeah, so MITRE as part of this evaluation uh, uh, made it such that participants were not able to disclose what security tools that they were using. And uh, one approach why they did that is they wanted to have a qualitative view of how the provider took any alerts by any tools that were detected and how they made sense of it. So certainly we know what we use, we're not able to disclose, but you can see from our interface, it doesn't matter what the security tools are. A lot of the endpoint tools are very good. We take it, we bring it in with additional context and we provide that above and beyond the alerts from the security tools that you may be using. Great. Thanks, Chris. Um, Let's do one more quick question before we wrap up. How does this eval compare to what you've seen in real world deployments? Yeah, and that is, I can probably take another 30 minutes to uh, talk about that. As I mentioned before, production environments are vastly different than testing scenarios, right? It was a small network. They turned off a lot of perfection uh, techniques. They did not have default policies and, and enabled, and that really is a big difference. When you're a customer and you onboard a critical start, that's where we start. We start to make sure that your your security technologies and policies for your tools are configured correctly, because that's actually the cheapest dollar to spend to, to prevent block or deflect attacks. And then on top of that, we recommend that maybe you get started with endpoint, but as you expand to a SIM, identity, network, cloud, applications, uh, that's where you can bring those into our platform and give you more of a view across the entire landscape that you really can't do in a testing network like uh, they set up. So you can start small and uh, we can grow together. Great. Thanks, Chris. Well, that is all the time we have for today. Um, but if your question didn't get answered, no worries. Uh, we will follow up with you directly. And thank you so much again for joining us. Um, Like Chris said, there's a lot of great resources to check out, and you can visit our website at criticalstart.com and follow us on LinkedIn for more cybersecurity updates, news, and events like this one. So thanks again, and have a great rest of your day.